Charlie Brewer took the Baylor Bears from being one of the worst teams in all of college football to one of the best teams in all of college football. He appeared in more than 40 games for Baylor and is one of the greatest quarterbacks in the program's history. However, 2020 was the worst season of his career and now he's in the transfer portal and leaving Baylor. So what happened to the Brewer from a few years ago and why is he leaving the school he's made so much history at? Before we get to today's video, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I post a lot of college football content, so make sure you turn on those notifications so you don't miss another video. Growing up, Charlie was a Texas fan, and for pretty good reason. His father, Robert Brewer, was the Longhorn starting quarterback in the early 1980s, earning the 1982 Cotton Bowl Offensive MVP after leading Texas to a win over Alabama. His grandfather, Charles Brewer, was a Texas quarterback in the 1950s. Meanwhile, Charlie's uncle, Rob Morshell, followed Robert Brewer as Texas' starting quarterback in the 1980s. Playing quarterback ran in the family, so it wasn't a surprise when Charlie began playing the position in middle school. He continued to learn the position and grow as a player, as many were expecting him to be the next Brewer to reach the collegiate level. By his junior year at Lake Travis High School, Charlie was starting at quarterback for one of the most powerful programs in the state of Texas. From 2007 through 2011, Lake Travis won five straight state championships. Charlie watched from the sidelines as his older brother Michael Brewer led the Cavaliers to the 2009 and 2010 state titles. Following his brother and future Oklahoma Heisman Trophy winner Baker Mayfield as the Lake Travis quarterback, the bar was set pretty high when Charlie took over as the full-time starter in 2015 after making some starts the previous year. Brewer was fantastic as he threw for 3,400 yards with 42 touchdowns while rushing for 600 yards and 9 touchdowns as a junior, leading Lake Travis to the Class 6A Division II state championship game. After Lake Travis won 15 straight games, they got blown out in the state championship game, leaving Brewer more determined than ever to win the championship the following year as a senior. The following season, Charlie shattered state and national passing records. Lake Travis rolled to a 15-1 record and won the 2016 Class 6A Division I Championship. His 77.4 completion percentage set a national record as he threw for 3,900 yards with 54 passing touchdowns. Not too bad, Charlie. Not too bad at all. Despite all of his high school accomplishments and records that he broke, Charlie Brewer was overlooked by Power 5 conference schools due largely to his relatively small 6-foot, 175-pound frame. Texas, the school in which so many of his family members played, didn't offer him a scholarship. He ended up committing to SMU, which was coached by Chad Morris, who had a long history with the Brewer family since he had coached Michael Brewer at Lake Travis. Shortly after Lake Travis won the 2016 state title, newly hired Baylor coach Matt Rule called Charlie Brewer at his home in Austin and offered him a scholarship on the spot. The conversation went great and Charlie wanted to commit to Baylor right then and there, but his dad told him to think about it for a few days before making a decision. He had always dreamed of playing in the Big 12 since he was a kid. It looked like it wasn't going to happen, but Matt Rule gave him an opportunity. Within weeks of committing to Baylor, Charlie was enrolled at the university to get a jump start on his college career. By the end of preseason drills, he was third on the depth chart behind graduate transfer New Solomon and sophomore Zach Smith, but due to injuries to both quarterbacks, Brewer started the last four games of his freshman year. After the Bears started the 2017 season with eight straight losses, Brewer led them to their only win of the season by throwing for over 300 yards with three touchdowns in a win over Kansas in his first ever college start. Brewer had a very nice finish to the season as he was named the Big 12 Offensive Freshman of the Year as he completed 68% of his passes for 1,500 yards with 11 passing touchdowns. Although he went 1-3 in his four starts, Brewer showed flashes of being a really good quarterback that Baylor could build around in the following years. He won the starting quarterback job to begin the 2018 season and completely turn the Bears season around. After winning only one game the year prior, Charlie Brewer led them to a 7-win season. He threw for more than 3,000 yards with 19 passing touchdowns while adding nearly four yards on the ground to go along with seven rushing touchdowns. In just one year, Brewer improved Baylor's record by six games. For Charlie, he had never been a huge fan of numbers. When he was setting records in high school, he didn't care. He just wanted to win football games and championships. It was the same mentality for him while at Baylor. He didn't care about his numbers at all. His number one goal was to get the Bears to the Big 12 title game and win it. He quickly got the Bears off to a hot start in 2019 as they started 3-0 to begin the season. Through the first three games, Charlie was fantastic. He threw for nearly 700 yards with 7 touchdowns and no interceptions, or rushing for 2 touchdowns as well. Sitting at 3-0 on the season and undefeated, Baylor welcomed Iowa State to town. 
He led Baylor to a come from behind victory against the Cyclones, beating them by two points to move the Bears to 4-0 on the season. He was named the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award National Player of the Week after his performance. He completed 26 passes for over 300 yards with three touchdowns. Trailing the Cyclones by one point with less than four minutes on the clock in the fourth quarter, Brewer drove the Bears 54 yards on 13 plays. He converted three times on third down and completed seven of 10 passes to get Baylor into field goal range and ultimately set up the victory. He was slowly beginning to move up the ranks in Baylor quarterback history as, after that game, he ranked second in Baylor history in completion percentage, was tied for third in passer efficiency rating, sixth in yards, fifth in completions, and fifth in touchdowns. Brewer and Baylor just kept winning. Baylor was 9-0 to begin the year and they had a legitimate chance of reaching the college football playoff. They welcomed Oklahoma to town and jumped out to a 25-point lead. Unfortunately, they couldn't hold it as Baylor blew the game and dropped their first game of the year. Brewer and the Bears bounced back nicely though, winning their next two games to finish the season 11-1. For the first time in his career at Baylor, Charlie Brewer would be playing for a Big 12 championship, exactly what he had dreamed about when he came to Baylor. However, his dream didn't go according to plan at all. He was taken out after the game after coming up wobbly following a pair of hard collisions early in the game. He completed three of six passes for 15 yards before he left. Unfortunately, he didn't return and Baylor fell to Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. He remained in the concussion protocol and his availability in the Sugar Bowl against Georgia looked unlikely. However, being the tough player he was, he managed to make it back in time for the biggest game for Baylor in years. Unfortunately, for a second straight time, Brewer took a hard hit that knocked him out of the game. This time, in Baylor's Sugar Bowl loss to Georgia. After a run in the fourth quarter, Brewer took a hard and late hit while stepping out of bounds and laid motionless on the ground for a few minutes. He was helped up and had to be escorted off the field in a cart. Brewer came into the game having suffered three total concussions, and this looked like it could have potentially been his fourth. Combine the frequency of the concussions with how he runs the ball so aggressively, many people were wondering if Brewer would have to ask himself if it was time to call it quits for his football career for the sake of his health. Many, many, many people took to Twitter immediately after seeing his hit, sharing their concern with his health and whether or not it was all worth it to continue his football career moving forward. During the 2020 offseason, Baylor coach Matt Rule, the man responsible for bringing Charlie to Baylor, left for the NFL. With his head coach gone and a bad history with hard hits, what would Brewer decide moving forward? Well, to no surprise, he wanted to keep going. Brewer knew that he was going to be asked all season if he should hang it up. He says he already heard it plenty in the winter when he walked around campus or dined at restaurants. He wanted to make something clear. He suffered a stinger that night against Georgia, a hit between his neck and shoulder that made his right arm go numb. The whole situation got way blown out of proportion with all that stuff. It was not nearly as bad. What everyone thought it was, it wasn't that. It's something I had to deal with, but I know that I'm healthy. My teammates and coaches know that. It was just completely blown out of proportion and never was really a decision I had to make because I knew it was never that bad. Although he still had a hard time talking about the conference title game. That moment was years and years of hard work finally paying off and for him, it was over just like that. In the weeks that followed, he couldn't bring himself to rewatch the game. It was just too painful. He said he wasn't gonna just sit there and think about it. He wanted to move on to the next year. Charlie desperately wanted to get back to the Big 12 title game and redeem himself. He knew that it would require a lot of hard work, but he was willing to make the sacrifice. Baylor rolled over Kansas in the first game of the season, beating them by 30. Brewer only threw for 150 yards with a touchdown, but they looked as if they'd be off to another strong start to the year. Then, things took a drastic turn. Baylor lost five straight games to move to one and five on the season. During that stretch, Charlie Brewer threw 10 touchdowns and had five interceptions. It got so bad that during the losing streak, Charlie Brewer began to receive death threats. His sister tweeted this after the Texas Tech game. I get that some don't understand the entire game of football, so I can't get upset in regards to that, but death threats are never okay. I'm embarrassed to be a Baylor fan, but I'll always be a Charlie Brewer fan. I'm sorry you can't understand, it's not a one-player game. Things were pretty low for Brewer in the Bears. He answered back nicely to the threats, as his next game was one of the best of his entire Baylor career. He completed 80% of his passes for 350 yards with two passing touchdowns, but rushing for 60 yards and two rushing touchdowns. The Bears went on to drop their next two games, and they finished the season 2-7. and seven. Brewer finished the year with just under 2,000 passing yards to go along with 14 touchdowns and 8 interceptions. What a lot of fans didn't know was December 12th would be the final time Brewer would suit up for the Bears. Just one day later, Brewer posted to Twitter saying he was going to be entering the transfer portal as a grad transfer. Here's what he shared. 
It is with much thought and prayer that I am announcing I will be entering the transfer portal and moving on as a graduate transfer. A heartfelt thank you to my teammates, Coach Rule and Coach Aranda for an amazing ride the past four years here at Baylor. I will take with me a lifetime of great memories and a degree from Baylor University. Here's what Dave Aranda said in a statement. I am very thankful for Charlie and all that he has given Baylor football and Baylor University over the last four years. I have so much respect for him and the way he has led our team. There is no doubt in my time here that Charlie has been tough, hardworking, and competitive. We wish him nothing but the best in his next step. Although Brewer has played four seasons without a red shirt, he can play in 2021 by utilizing NCAA's 2020 eligibility relief, which allowed all players to participate this season without accounting against their eligibility because of circumstances stemming from the coronavirus pandemic. When it's all said and done, Brewer's going to go down as one of the best quarterbacks in Baylor's history. He has the record for pass completions and attempts, ranks number two in career yards and passing touchdowns, rushing touchdowns by a quarterback, and touchdowns responsible. With Brewer having one year of eligibility, eligibility left, where do you think he's going to transfer to? I'm not sure if we could see this happen, but how awesome would it be to see him go to Texas? As I mentioned earlier, he grew up a diehard Longhorns fan and has a lot of family ties to the university. If Sam Ellinger decides to leave, I think it would be the perfect fit. Plus, it would be great to see Brewer end his collegiate career at his dream school. If you haven't done so yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a video. If you love college football, this is definitely the place for you. Also, if you could take a second and give this video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. It only takes a second to do, and it really helps share this video with more college football fans. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.